and welcome to Minecraft Redstone Tutorials. My name is Slockner. And I'm Lil Liam. Today we're going to be covering iron doors and double doors. Right, iron doors. Great things. Basically, I've got fed up at Slockner coming into my house all the time and just walking in, hitting my door and opening it. Now, you have the iron door. You can't physically open the iron door by punching it or running into it or anything like that. You have to use a pressure plate redstone torch or something to open the door. As you can see, just simply put a redstone torch in front of it, it will open, let you in. Take it away, it's going to close on you. Right, if like me, you like the uh, double doors that you see in so many houses recently, they're actually really straightforward to do. So, all you do, you run your redstone out from your uh, side of your door and down to the other side of the door. Now, as we flick the switch, both doors swap. So, we need to use a NOT gate to swap it over. So, you remove two blocks of your redstone, take your dirt, put it in the gap, and you put the redstone torch on the other side, and like a miracle, it swaps. So, now you can close your doors, and you can open them, and they both work together. Nice and straightforward. Okay, so we've just seen Neum create a knot gate. Now, for each different gate, we're going to try and use a different material. So you can see, up here we have earth equals knot gate. Hello, I'm going to show you a few more uses you can do with your knot gates. Now, the main use which we use them for, or at least I use them for, is uh, to actually extend my redstone. You can see here that we have a few different uh, circuits set up. This one here, which has got a switch on it, is connected to that door. Now, that is the maximum length which you can have redstone running at before it goes dead like this one here. Now, the best way to uh, extend it, or the, really the only way to extend it, is to actually add knot gates. Now, if we add one in here, you can then see that it inverts the signal, which is not particularly ideal because it means our door will never open. Um, so what we then have to do is add in another knot gate, which will create another inverse, making the door red and extending the signal out, causing the door to open. So that's how to uh, extend your redstone using knot gates. So you probably noticed while I was showing you all of this redstone malarkey that there is a massive sign behind me which says MCRT, which actually stands for Minecraft Redstone Tutorials, aka these tutorials right here. You may have also noticed that at the top there is flashing red lights going in sequence. Now, this is very clever and amazing, and a lot of you won't know how to do it, which is why, in the Christmas special, we will be showing you how to do it. That should be coming to you maybe a day or two after this tutorial goes up, so keep your eyes posted. Keep your eyes posted? That doesn't make any sense. So keep yourselves posted. Keep your eyes on it. This thing you see behind me is an RS NOR latch. It's used to make buttons, as you can see just here, work in a very similar way to switches. So all you have to do, you, you just hit the button and the door will open and stay open as if it would with a switch. Now, as you can see, it uses two knot gates very simply set up and linked together. Now, knot gates can have three inputs at any one time, which makes them really useful for most things. As you hit the button, the redstone that I'm standing on will light up. So and we'll turn this torch off. Because this torch turns off, this torch turns on, and make sure that torch over there stays off. And we come off the side of it, and it stay, holds the door open. And it'll stay open for as long as we like. Until you press the reset button. As soon as you hit the reset button, door slams shut, closed until you hit the on button again. Now you can tie this into lots of different things, uh, mainly timer circuits, which we're going to be covering in the Christmas special in a few days. Okay, next on our list of uh, gates is the AND gate. Now, this forms the basic idea of your code lock systems. Dead straightforward again. As you can see, it's set up like this. It's really, really important that you remember the block of redstone right in the middle on the top. So many times I've built an entire system, spent two and a half hours trying to work out why it's wrong, and then realised I missed a single block of redstone. You've got no idea how annoying that is. But anyway, you flick switch one, 
turns off the torch, but the other one doesn't turn on. You want to turn both of them to on for anything to come out the other side. It doesn't work if they're both off either. Both oh. off, it's not on. Now we're going to cover how to make some very simple code locks using AND gates. It's really straightforward and you should be seeing a time lapse after this of how it was made. Hopefully through the uh, time lapse that you've just watched, uh, you can see how to actually build it. Now I'm going to cover what each bit does, how to change the code lock and everything. So as you saw in the time lapse, I threw up all these AND gates really, really quickly, except I didn't put a red dot torch on top of this one, just here. Now it's very deliberate. As the uh, switches are flicked on, the torch turns off. So that's off, it turns to on the torch turns off. Now with this one it works the opposite way round so that has to be off not on. So as you see as I flick it the door opens and closes. So it's very straightforward to change the code. All you have to do take out another torch and put another unit of red dust in then the code is now changed so you have to have two off. So, as you see, it's very straightforward to change it. Now, the other ones are just to make sure that these are all on at any one time. So if you just linked all the uh, red dust together, it, only one of them would have to be right, and it's not what you want. You need them all to be right. And they all come into this one, and this one runs the door. So, it's the end of episode two. We, again, I say I've crashed with lull. <laughs> Brilliant. You got that on recording as well. Stunner. That's, that's going in the. Uh, that's definitely going in the outtakes. Yeah. Oh, you know. And now I just keep falling through the map. Ah, where am I? Oh, I see it's black. Ah, ah, ah. Where am I, Liam? Ah. Where's the face? There it is. Right, I can't technically see you, but that's fine. I don't need to be able to, as long as you can see me. Okay, jump when you're done. Oh my god, what the fuck? Saying internal reception, java.net, the socket, e exception, connection reset. It sounds it's like a server breakdown. Why would it be saying, why would it be doing this? Why is it doing this to me, Neo? It is. It is what it is. That's actually what it is. The face doesn't like it. It's God. We we know we must bow down to him. What should we call him? No, that's this is it. Have you got that recorded? In which case, I now declare this face be of a godly nature. So we need people to come up with godlike names. Please, let's not get too religious out here. But we need religious type names which will go with this person with with the sand constipated man sorry oh lord please don't make me crash again but we need some sort of godly name so give us your suggestions please <laughs> <laughs>